little no bird pie for Mr. Twit. Mr. Twit wasn't going to wait another week for his bird pie supper. He loved bird pie. It was his favorite meal. So that very same day, he went after the birds again. This time, he smeared all the top bars of the monkey cage with sticky glue. It was as the brand it was as the branches of the big dead tree. Now I'll get you, he said, whichever one you sit on. The monkeys crouched inside the cage watching all this. And later on, when the roly-poly bird came swooping in for an evening chat, they shouted out, Don't land on our cage, roly-poly bird. It's covered with sticky glue. So is the tree. And that evening, as the sun went down and all the birds came again to roost, the roly-poly bird flew around and around the monkey cage and the big dead tree singing his warning. There's sticky stuff now on the cage and the tree. If you land on either, you'll never get free. So fly away, fly away, stay up high, or you'll finish up tomorrow in a hot bird pie. Mr. and Miss Twit go off to buy guns. The next morning, when Mr. Twit came out with his huge basket, not a single bird was sitting on either the monkey cage or the big dead tree. They were all perched happily on the roof of Mr. Twit's house. The roly-poly bird was up there as well. And the monkeys were in the cage, and the whole lot of them were hooting and laughing at Mr. Twit. There. I'll wipe that silly laugh off your beaks, Mr. Twit screamed at the birds. I'll get you next time, you filthy feathery frumps. I'll wring your necks, the whole lot of you, and I'll have you bubbling in the pot for bird pie before the day is out. Can you see him? He's shaking his fist. How are you going to do that? Asked Miss Twit, who had come outside to see what all the noise was about. I won't have you smearing sticky glue all over the roof of our house. Mr. Twit went very close to Miss Twit and lowered his voice so that neither the birds nor the monkeys could hear. I've got an idea, he said. We'll both go into town right away and we'll buy a gun each. How's that? Brilliant, cried Miss Twit, grinning and showing her long yellow teeth. We'll buy those big shotguns that spray out 50 bullets or more with each bang. Exactly, said Mr. Twit. Lock up the house and I'll go and make sure the monkeys are safely shut away. Mr. Twit went over to the monkey cage. Attention! He barked in his fearsome monkey trainer's voice. Upside down, all of you. Jump to it. One on top of the other. Quick, get on with it, or you'll feel Miss Twit's sti stick across your backs. Oh, poor monkeys. Obediently, the poor monkeys stood on their hands and climbed one on top of the other with Mugglewump at the bottom and the smallest child at the very top. Now stay there till we come back, Mr. Twit ordered. Don't you dare move and, I, and don't overbalance. When we return in two or three hours time, I shall expect to find you all in exactly the same position as you are now. You understand? With that, Mr. Twit marched away. Miss Twit went with him, and the monkeys were left alone with the birds. Mugglewump has an idea. As soon as Mr. and Miss Twit had disappeared down the road, the monkeys all flipped back on their feet the right way up. Quick, get the key, Mugglewump called out to the roly-poly bird who was still sitting on the roof of the house. What key? shouted Rolly Pulley Bird. The key to the door of our cage, cried Mugglewump. It's hanging on the nail in the workshed. 
That's where he always puts it. The roly-poly bird flew down and came back with the key in his beak. Mugglewump reached a hand through the bar of the cage and took the key. He put it in the lock and turned it. The door opened. All four monkeys leapt out together. We're free, cried the two little ones. We, where shall we go, Dad? Where shall we hide? Don't get excited, said Mr. Mugglewump. Calm down, everybody. Before we escape from the beastly place, we have one very important thing to do. What's that? They asked him. We're going to turn those terrible twits upside down. We're going to what? They cried. You must be joking, Dad. I'm not joking, Mugglewump said. We're going to turn both Mr. and Miss Twit upside down with their legs in the air. Don't be ridiculous. Ridiculous, the roly-poly bird said. How can we possibly turn those two maggoty old monsters upside down? We can, we can, cried Mugglewump. We are going to make them stand on their heads for hours and hours, perhaps forever. Let them see what it feels like for a change. How, said the roly-poly bird, just tell me how. Mugglewump laid his head on one side and a tiny twinkle little smile touched the corners of his mouth. Now and again, he said, but not very often, I have a brilliant idea. This is one of them. Follow me, my friends. Follow me. He scampered off towards the house and the three other monkeys and the roly-poly bird went after him. Buckets and paintbrushes, cried Mugglewump. That's what we want next. There are plenty in the workshed. Hurry up, everyone. Get a bucket and a paintbrush. Inside Mr. Twit's workshed, there was an enormous barrel of hug-tight sticky glue, the stuff he used for catching birds. Fill your buckets, Mugglewump ordered. We are going into the big house. Miss Twit had hidden the key to the front door under the mat, and Mugglewump had seen her doing it, so it was easy for them to get in. In they went, all four monkeys with their buckets of sticky glue. Then came the roly-poly bird flying in after them with a bucket, of his, a bucket in his beak and a brush in his claw. The Great Painting Begins. This is the living room, announced Mugglewump, the grand and glorious living room where those two fearful, frumptious freaks eat bird pie every week for supper. Please don't mention bird pie again, said the roly-poly bird. It gives me the shudders. We mustn't waste time, cried Mugglewump. Hurry up, hurry up. Now the first thing is, I want everyone to paint sticky glue all over the ceiling, Cover it all. Smear it in every corner. Over the ceiling, they cried. Why the ceiling? Never mind why, shouted Mugglewump. Just do as you're told and don't argue. But how do we get up there? They asked. We can't reach. Oh, Mugglewump is so cute. And there's the, the monkeys picture. Monkeys can reach anywhere, shouted Mugglewump. He was in a frenzy of excitement, now waving his paintbrush and his bucket and leaping about all over the room. Come on, come on, jump on the table, stand on the chairs, hop on each other's shoulders. Roly-poly can do it flying. Don't stand there gaping. We have to hurry. Don't you understand that? Those terrible twits will be back any moment, and this time they'll have guns. Get on with it. We haven't, for heaven's sake, get on with it. And so the great glue painting of the ceiling began. All the other birds who had been sitting on the roof flew in to help, carrying paintbrushes in their claws and beaks. They were, there were buzzards, wild ducks, woodpeckers, magpies, rooks, ravens, and many more. Everyone was splashing away all, oh, splashing away like mad. And with so many helpers, the job was soon finished. 
Here are the monkeys. Oh, the baby's painting the roof. Here's the, this, I think this is Mugglewump. Here's the mom. Here's the baby. And then here are all the birds up on the roof. The carpet goes on the ceiling. What now? They all said, looking at Mugglewump. Aha! cried Mugglewump. Now for the fun. Now for the greatest upside down trick of all time. Are you ready? We're ready, said the monkeys. We're ready, said the birds. Put out the carpet, shouted Mugglewump. Pull the huge carpet out from under the furniture and stick it onto the ceiling. Onto the ceiling, cried one of the small monkeys. But that's impossible, Dad. I'll stick you onto the ceiling if you don't shut up, snapped Mugglewump. He's dotty, they cried. He's balmy. He's batty. He's nutty. He's screwy. He's wacky, cried the roly-poly bird. Poor old Muggle. Poor old Muggles. He's gone off the wump at last. Oh, do stop shouting such rubbish and give me a hand, said Mugglewump, catching hold of one corner of the carpet. Pull, you nitwits, pull! Here's Mugglewump. He's telling everybody. The carpet was enormous. It covered the entire floor from wall to wall. It had, red, it had a red and gold pattern on it. It was not easy to pull the enormous carpet off the floor when the room was full of tables and chairs. Pull, yelled Mugglewump. Pull, pull, pull. He was like a demon hopping around the room and telling everyone what to do. But you couldn't blame him. After months and months of standing on his head with his family, he couldn't wait for the time when the terrible twits would be doing the same thing. At last, that's what he hoped, or at least that's what he hoped. With the monkeys and the birds all pulling and puffing, the carpet was dragged off the floor and finally hoisted up onto the ceiling. And there it stuck. At once, the whole ceiling of the living room was carpeted in red and gold. Here's a picture. He's running around telling people what to, or telling the birds and monkeys what to do. There's the roly-poly bird right here. The furniture goes up. Now the, now the table, the big table, shouted Mugglewump. Turn the table upside down and put a dollop of sticky glue onto the bottom of each leg. Then we shall stick that onto the ceiling as well. Hoisting the huge table upside down onto the ceiling was not an easy job, but they managed it in the end. Will it stay there, they cried. Is the glue strong enough to hold it up? It's the strongest glue in the world, Mugglewump replied. It's the special bird-catching, bird-killing glue for smearing on trees. Please, said Rolly Polly Bird. I've asked you before not to mention that subject. How would you like it if there was a monkey pie they made every Wednesday and all your friends had been boiled up and went on talking about it? I do beg your pardon, said Mugglewump. I'm so excited I hardly know what I'm saying. Now the chairs do the same thing. Uh, I lost my place. Now the chairs do the same with the chairs. All the chairs must be stuck upside down to the ceiling and in their right place. Do hurry up, everybody. Any moment now, those two filthy freaks are going to come rushing in with their guns. The monkeys, with the birds helping them, put glue on the bottom of each chair leg and hoisted them up to the ceiling. Oops. Now the smaller tables, shouted Mugglewump, and the big sofa, and the sideboard, and the lamps, and all the tiny little things the ashtrays, the ornaments, and the beastly plastic gnome on the sideboard. Everything, absolutely everything, must be stuck on the ceiling. It was terribly hard work. 
It was especially difficult to stake everything onto the ceiling in exactly the right place, but they got it done in the end. They're putting the TV. Now what? asked the roly-poly bird. He was out of breath and so tired he could hardly flap his wings. Now the pictures, cried Mugglewump. Turn all the pictures upside down. And will one of you birds please fly onto the road and watch to see when those frumptuous freaks are coming back? I'll go, said the roly-poly bird. I'll sit on the telephone wires and keep guard. I'll, it'll give me a rest. Uh-oh. Here, let me do a better job. The ravens swoop over. They had only just finished the job when the roly-poly bird came swooping in, screaming, They're coming back! They're coming back! Quickly, the birds flew back onto the roof of the house. The monkeys rushed into the cage and stood upside down, one on top of the other. A moment later, Mr. and Miss Twit came marching into the garden, each carrying a fearsome-looking gun. I'm glad to see those monkeys are still upside down, said Mr. Twit. They're too stupid to do anything else, said Miss Twit. Hey, look at all those cheeky birds still up there on the roof. Let's go inside and load our lovely new guns, and then it'll be bang, 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 and bird pie for supper. Just as Mr. and Mrs. Twit were about to enter the house, two black ravens swooped down over their heads. Each bird carried a paintbrush in its claw, and each paintbrush was smeared with sticky glue. As the ravens whizzed over, they brushed a streak of sticky glue onto the top of Mr. and Mrs. Twit's head. They did it with the lightest touch, but, but even so, the Twits both felt it. What was that? cried Miss Twit. Some beastly bird has dropped his dirty droppings on my head. Mine too, shouted Mr. Twit. I felt it. I felt it. Don't touch it, cried Miss Twit. You'll get it all over your hands. Come inside and we'll wash it off at the sink. The filthy, dirty brutes, yelled Mr. Twit. I'll bet they did it on purpose. Just wait till I've loaded up my gun. Miss Twit got the key from under the doormat, where Mugglewump had carefully replaced it, and into the house they went. Whoa. Here's the picture. The twits were turned upside down. Oh, the twits are turned upside down. What's this? gasped Mr. Twit as they entered the living room. What's happened? screamed Miss Twit. They stood in the middle of the room looking up. All the furniture, the big table, the chairs, the sofa, the lamps, the little side table, the cabinets with bottles of beer in it, the ornaments, the electric heater, the carpet, everything was stuck upside down on the ceiling. The pictures were upside down on the walls, and the, f and the floor they were standing on was absolutely bare. What's more, it had been painted white to look like the ceiling. Look, screamed Miss Twit. That's the floor. The floor is up, up there. This is the ceiling. We're standing on the ceiling. We're upside down, gasped Mr. Twit. We must be upside down. We are standing on the ceiling looking down at the floor. Oh, help, screamed Miss Twilp. Miss Twit. Help, help, help. I'm beginning to feel giddy. So am I, so am I, cried Mr. Twit. I don't like this one bit. We're upside down and all the blood's going to my head, screamed Miss Twit. If we don't do something quickly, I shall die. I know I will. I've got it, cried Mr. Twit. I know what we'll do. We'll stand on our heads. Then anyway, we'll be the right way. Then anyway, we'll be the right way up. So they stood on their heads. And of course, the moment the tops of their heads touched the floor, the sticky glue that the ravens had brushed 
on a few moments before did the job. They were stuck. They were pinned down, cemented, glued, fixed to the floorboards. Through the crack on the floor, the monkeys, oh, sorry, through a crack in the door, the monkeys watched. They jumped right out of their cages the moment the twits had gone inside and the roly-poly bird watched and all the other birds flew in and out to, to catch a glimpse of the extraordinary sight. Let's see. Oh, we're almost done. We'll keep going. The monkeys escape. That evening, Mugglewump and his family went up to the big wood on top of the hill. And in the tallest tree of all, they built a marvelous tree house. All the birds, especially the big ones, the crows and the rooks and the magpies, made their nests around the tree house so that nobody could see it from the ground. You can stay here forever, you know, the roly-poly bird said. Why not? said uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Let me try that again. You can't stay up here forever, you know, said, uh, the roly-poly bird said. Why not, asked Mugglewump. It's a lovely place. Just you wait till winter comes, the roly-poly bird said. Monkeys don't like cold weather, do they? They most certainly don't, cried Mugglewump. Are the winters so very cold over here? It's all snow and ice, said the roly-poly bird. Sometimes it's so cold a bird will wake up in the morning with his feet frozen to the bough that he's been roosting in. A bough is a branch, so he'll find himself stuck to the branch that he was sleeping on. Then what shall we do, cried Mugglewump. My family will all be deep freezed. Oh, here we go. No, they won't, said the roly-poly bird, because when the first leaves start falling from the trees in the autumn, you can all fly home to Africa with me. Don't be ridiculous, Mugglewump said. Monkeys can't fly. You can sit on my back, said the roly-poly bird. I shall take you one at a time. You will travel by the roly-poly super jet, and it won't cost you a penny. The twits get the shrinks. And down here in the horrid house, Mr. and Mrs. Twit were still stuck upside down to the floor of the living room. It's all your fault, yelled Mr. Twit, thrashing his legs in the air. You're the one, you ugly old cow, who went hopping around shouting, we're upside down, we're upside down. And you're the one who said to stand on our heads so we'd be the right way up, you whiskery old warthog, screamed Mrs. Twit. Now we'll never get free. We're stuck here forever. You may be stuck here forever, said Mr. Twit, but not me. I'm going to get away. Mr. Twit wiggled and squirmed, and he squiggled and wormed, and he twisted and turned, and he choggled and churned, but the sticky glue held him to the floor, just as tight as it had once held the poor birds in the big dead tree. He was still as upside down as ever, standing on his head. But heads are not made to be stood on. If you stand on your head for a very long time, a horrid thing happens. And this was where Mr. Twit got his biggest shock of all. With so much weight on it from up above, his head began to get squished into his body. Quite soon, he had disappeared completely sunk out of sight in the fatty folds of his flabby neck. I'm shrinking, burbled Mr. Twit. So am I, cried Miss Twit. Help me, save me, call a doctor, yelled Mr. Twit. I'm getting this, I'm getting the dreaded shrinks. And so he was. 
Miss Twit was getting the dreaded shrinks too. And this time, it wasn't, a, it wasn't fake. It was the real thing. Their heads shrank into their necks. Then their necks began shrinking into their bodies. And their bodies began shrinking into their legs. And their legs began shrinking into their feet. And one week later, on a nice sunny afternoon, a man called Fred came around to read the gas meter. When nobody answered the door, Fred peeped into the house. And there he saw on the floor of the living room two bundles of old clothes, two pairs of shoes, and a walking stick. There was nothing more left in this world of Mr. and Mrs. Twit. And everyone, including Fred, shouted, Hooray! The end.